an island of Romaine in a region that voted overwhelmingly out. Nearly a fifth of Durham's inhabitants have a degree, which statistics suggest also means they're more liberal and outward-looking than those without. With left and right now less obviously a marker of how someone might vote, university appears a prime seeding ground for liberal identities. So here we are, we're entering the premises of the Durham Union Society. The Jack Gilmore is the society's proud treasurer. Founded in 1842, all those years ago. Amongst the student fraternity, Jack's in a minority group. And this place has produced many notable MPs, including Edward Lee and Crispin Blunt. And here we have the main debating chamber here. He's a Conservative supporter and a Leave voter. The other three here are Labour Remainers. Have you seen good political people? Uh, voting Remain and voting Labour is again, it's about how I feel about society and I want society to be multicultural, I want everyone to be equal. What do you think it is, if anything, about university education that makes it such a marker for how people generally vote? Um, well I think certainly people who are more university educated of course tended to vote remain more in the referendum. I think what's really sad at the moment is the 48% who voted Remain have kind of been cut out of public discourse entirely. We're pursuing a hard Brexit, we're leaving the single market, which wasn't on the ballot paper. You know, the 48%, which is, you know, a very large portion of this country, are being labelled enemies of the people in the press and effectively being cut out of the discussion. People who go to university, they're interacting in more multicultural societies and if you go to university you're more likely to get a job in a city as well which is then more likely to be remain. I think that your views can so easily be swayed depending on you know who your friends are. My views changed when I came to university somewhat on topics like religion for example but what do you mean? Uh, well when I, I was quite I, I was a believer when I started in my first year but I was exposed to different thoughts and I became an atheist afterwards for example. I think Background and where you're, where you're born, how you're raised, and so on determines, I think, your politics quite quite a lot. You, you know, as I, my parents were both working class people who became middle class; they were the aspirational sort of ones. And I think their sort of story of, you know, well, for want of a better term, rags to riches, I think, is, uh, is is an inspirational one. And I think, and that's why I have a conservative mindset. Education apparently fuels voting habits. In the French election, areas whose inhabitants had less education were much less likely to vote for Macron than the more educated regions. Both Brexit and Donald Trump's victory were also driven by people with fewer educational qualifications. Why is education having this effect? And is it patronising even to look at voting through this prism? Almost as if this is a problem to be fixed, instead of simply democracy in action. Everyone's right to have a different opinion. Newsnight headed up the coast, back to a place that was celebrating when we visited the day after the Brexit vote. All right, they haven't been to sea for 15 days or 18 days. Well, that's just because the wind's from the east. You can't stop nature, can you? No, that's not it. John Ellis has worked at North Shields Fish Key for 60 years. I can read a little bit and write a little bit, but you would cut last me a little bit. Without educational qualifications, John made a good living doing a valued job in a respected industry. And a kid your age now, 15 year old who left school, all that lobster's getting quiet, excited. Yeah. <laughs> What would would they have the same prospects as you had back then? No, no, it was all all the case of down here was if you worked hard, you just had to work hard. And when you think about the Prime Minister now, Theresa May, I think she's a good woman. Why? What do you think? What do you like about her? Oh, she's down to earth in in ways. Like I'm, I think she's alright for the country, and that's what I look at. The other fella's good as well, the Labour man. Jeremy but, Corbyn. Oh, but he's got no no oof about him. You know. You see. In heartland Labour Tyneside, many at the fish dock migrated to UKIP. This election, not all those votes are assured. The key master left school at 16 to be apprenticed. His children opted for university. Um, when I was younger, you had choices, you know, to go down the yards, the coal mines, you know, steel yards, but there's nothing now, nothing at all. I'm just now thinking I won't vote, because there's no one to vote for. There's no one decent. 
You couldn't bring yourself to vote Conservative? Oh, never. They wrecked the North of England the last time they had a female Prime Minister. I mean, I've got two kids now at university. One went into... He's just working at call centres and things like that. The other one's now at university because he went into construction, but there wasn't the work. There isn't the work in the North anymore. Unless Theresa May can come up to me and say, you know, put a deal on the table and say, this is what we're going to do, this is what we've got for the fishermen, then my vote will be going to UKIP to, to, to put through the job that they've already started. Jackie Weatherstone left school at 15. He voted UKIP recently, but back in the day, it was a different story. I had to be in the Labour Party to get a job at to get to see, otherwise you didn't get a job. And now? Be conservative, because the UKIP's finished, isn't it? You've done a job. This election, 53% of those YouGov asked who have no qualifications plan to vote Tory. 17% UKIP, 18% Labour and 5% Lib Dem. The Tory vote share seems to decrease for every extra qualification a voter has. Of those with degrees, Tory vote share was down to 36%, UKIP just 4 while Labour was on 28% and the Lib Dems 19 Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. The mood music across the Tyne in South Shields is about regeneration, in a place where 62% voted out and nearly 30% have no educational qualifications. At the Word Cultural Space, the council offers free music sessions for parents and babies. But when it comes to how these people might vote, is it education or employment prospects that count? William Bartlett is now a chef. He left school at 16, did NVQs and an apprenticeship in bricklaying. Recently, he's voted UKIP. Well, I, when I was doing a poll, uh, bricklaying apprenticeship, I couldn't get it because at first all the Polish came over and they took over the uh, people's jobs for uh, site labourers. So you couldn't get a job after the apprenticeship? No, I got ruled out of it because what, what was put down on paper, there was too many uh, cheap labourers available and they didn't want to pay for my wage compared to theirs. So that made you angry? Didn't make us angry. It's just obvious business sense, isn't it? Why pay for one person on this when you can get two for the same price? Works like that, doesn't it? It's business. So when Theresa May says we're going to bring immigration way down, you would support her in that? Yeah. Now, for this election, do you think you'd vote UKIP again? No. Why not? It's dying out. Kate Foster, on the left, went to university but didn't finish the course. From a mining family, she is staunch Labour and voted Remain. And what do you feel as a Remainer in this sea in the northeast of, of Leavers? I, I just don't understand, especially we've got Nissan at Sunderland, and I can't understand why a city that depends on industry and outside help would... I just don't understand. Is there any way you can explain it? Fear. People are frightened. Of Immigration. What? I want to live in a country that's open, open to people that need help. I want Freya to have, you know, friends from all walks of life and I don't, I don't see that that's going to be how it's going to be anymore. I do think it's under threat, I really do. The referendum gave a voice to those who haven't benefited from our globalised, graduate-centred economy. In Durham, our students were taking a break from exam revision. Amongst the gang, another Conservative, this time she's a Remainer, and a Liberal Democrat supporter. I don't think our values are under threat as much as we just need to articulate them better and perhaps in a less high-handed way. Um, I think the Liberal establishment has been a bit smug in their messaging and just assuming everyone's on their side. What we need to do is articulate Liberal values and just make the point that they're actually British values. I think we are really getting lost. I think we struggle within the Brexit rhetoric because obviously we lost, Remainers, we lost and we had to accept that which is fine but the way that we're going now, I'm really frightened of a hard Brexit because that's where the rhetoric I think is leading, especially as the Tory party want to increase their majority, which I'm I want it to happen too, but are we doing that at the expense of taking in some rather dangerous far-right voices? A university education doesn't give everybody liberal values, nor is everyone without a degree small-c conservative. But education is a significant predictor of voting behaviour, and with a likely realignment going on on the right, 
In many areas of Britain, it will play a big role in deciding who wins this election.